Hey everyone, Marty McMillan here and I'm in my shop in Mount Julia, Tennessee. And we've got a special video for you today. We're going to be doing uh, some fret work here on this McMillan guitar. And this is a very early one. This is serial number 7. And this one belongs to my good friend Paul Fa, who's uh, standing behind the camera right now doing this video for us. So thank you, Paul. When he brought the guitar in after inspecting it, he, he did have some notes that were kind of getting choked out a little bit, some buzzing and some intonation problems. So uh, after examining it, it's not necessarily a setup issue. What he's got is just wear and tear. Uh, the frets have some pitting in them, and we're going to go ahead and take care of that. When I'm assessing a guitar, there's some different routes I'll take when it comes to fret work. On this one, I'm able to get away with doing a partial refret. Um, a lot of times you're not able to do that, reason being if the guitar has got some twists in the fretboard, some humps, anything that you want to sand out of that fretboard and then re-radius it. Uh, this guitar, after checking with my notch straight edge, uh, it's looking fantastic. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just do the first seven frets and uh, let's go ahead and get started on that. Got all my tools out, everything ready to rock and roll, so let's get going. Alright, now that we've got the strings off, we're going to go ahead and start pulling the frets. Uh, for that, I've got my soldering iron and then uh, fret pullers. Here they are. Um, so these are uh, my favorite ones to use. I got these from Stuart McDonald. So just want to come through with your soldering iron and we're going to heat up that fret. Uh, this does have plastic binding on it, so be careful you don't slip and melt the binding. Because uh, then you have a whole other problem on your hands that you have to fix. So I'll just go back and forth over this fret a few times. Just get it warm, and then I'll start on the edge of my fret pullers, and go ahead and pull this fret out. Boom! And our first fret is out. Uh, no chips, no pulls, no nothing. Um, you just want to take your time if you start seeing that you're getting that fret slot starts to chip out. Go slow, have some super glue ready to go, and you're going to have to you know, go ahead and repair that as you go. Hopefully we don't need to do any of that today as I built this guitar, so I think this is going to go pretty smoothly. Now that we got the frets all pulled out, uh, I'm going to go through and clean out the fret slots. For that, I just have this fret slot cleaning tool, it's just like a little hook blade, uh, and go through and just clean these out. Um, when I'm doing refrets on uh, other makers' guitars, sometimes you run into different glues, types of things that could be in those fret slots that would prevent you from pressing in the new frets. Uh, if that is the case, uh, one way or another, you've got to get that glue out. They make little saws that you can use to do it. Uh, I have. Uh, small carbide uh, dental burrs that I get from a, a dental supply company that I can put into a Dremel, put in a base and go through and clean out those fret slots. Uh, I prefer not to do that if I can get away with it because you are going to be widening out that fret slot so it will be a glue in fret job that you're forced to do. Um, this right here, uh, I'm not running any problems. Again, I made the guitar so I, I knew how the frets were put in and I knew Paul didn't take it to get any work done elsewhere. Why would he? We're buddies. Uh, so this will be a quick little job of just going through and just making sure that these slots are clean and ready to accept the new fret tanks. Hear it? Yep, it's right there. Okay, to radius the fret wire, we're going to use the Stuart McDonald fret radius tool here. You just pop this in. Uh, the fretboard that we're trying to radius is a 16. We'll go ahead and just run this through. Puts that radius in there and then uh, grab your radius gauge. And you want to check and make sure that you're matching this. I like to go just slightly over the radius and this is perfect. So we're ready to get going. Okay, now that we've got our frets radius, our fret slots cleaned out, what we need to do is go ahead and cut our fret wire to length and then nip back the tanks. So what I'll do is come down here, just a little bit overhang on each side, maybe, a, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch at most. Cut that back, okay. 
And then here I've got the fret tang nippers. This will allow me to put the fret bead in there and just clip back that fret tang so the bead of the fret can hang over the binding and the ledge that we have there. So just go through and clip that back on the other side. And just come down and check it. What you want to do is make sure you're just inside of that binding. You don't want to be too far inside because then you won't get a good bite into the fret slot when you press that fret in. Also be careful that when you cut these tangs off, don't let them go down into your workplace because as you move this guitar around and work on it, if you've got a piece of metal in there, you're scratching up the lacquer pretty bad. Trust me. Just trust me. Okay, so after using this fret tang nipper and going through and just prepping all of the frets here, so I've got frets one through seven on this block, uh, you do need to do a little bit of filing to them before you start pressing them in. Reason being is that that nipper does a pretty good job of cutting them back, but it does leave a little residual piece of that fret tang on there. So I've just got a, uh, just a small file. It's got a safe edge on the side. And I'm gonna come through and just find a comfortable place on your bench, wherever, where you can hold this and just carefully file down the existing part of the tank that's left. All right, now that we've got all of our frets prepped and the tangs nipped back, um, I just did a real light cleaning of the fretboard here with just a razor blade. Just make sure you kind of clean up that top of the binding edge. Just make sure there's not any kind of dirt and grime on there that's going to be trapped underneath. Uh, so once you got that cleaned up, it's time to determine uh, how you're going to be installing these frets. Um, I like to do fret compression, but you can run into problems if you're over compressing the frets in. So what you want to do is take a fret, Place it in the slot, start pushing it down with your thumb, see how easily it goes in. If it just falls into the slot, you need to add more compression, more resistance. Uh, for that, I have a tool here that crimps the frets and makes the tang just a little bit wavy, and then you'll be able to press that in uh, better. If the fret does not go in and you're really pressing it, let's say you go through and press in all these new frets and you use too much fret compression, you need to think about your fretboard as kind of like an accordion. You've got all these fret slots in it, okay? And then if you jam a bunch of frets in to those slots, you're going to create a lot of back bow in that neck. You're putting essentially 20 wedges into that fretboard. And then you can get to where the string tension actually won't pull the fretboard and the headstock up with forward bow to give you a straight playing surface. So you can actually over compress those frets in and then uh, the guitar is just not going to play well. You're going to get a lot of buzzing on those first four frets because you're going to be fighting that back bow that you've pressed into that neck. So it is important to use the correct amount of compression. Uh, it's, let's say this is maybe the fifth refret that this guitar, not this one, but the guitar that you're working on has. Uh, you might find that those fret slots are just completely worn out. There's no way to get compression. in. At that point, you're gonna have to choose what type of glue you're going to use to glue in those frets. Um, and then you're gonna wanna wax the fretboard on either side of the fret slots because you're gonna get a lot of glue squeeze out. You wanna be able to clean that out. So just. Choosing the method of how you're installing the frets is very important, and there is no right answer. I see lots of time people saying, well, this is how you need to do a fret job, and that's not true. If it was like a multiple choice question, uh, you know, is it best to use fret compression, uh, to glue in frets, to clamp in frets, uh, or D, whatever that current job requires. So certain times I'll glue, certain times I won't. Today we will not be using any glue. We're just gonna go through and do a fret compression because these are the same type of frets are going in that were in there. Um, if I do need to crimp them slightly to get good compression, we'll do that. Reason why I don't wanna use a bunch of glue is because Paul's gonna keep playing this guitar and he's gonna wear out these frets that we're putting in. I mean, just think about frets are also kind of like the tires on your car. Um, they're not gonna last forever and you're gonna be doing tires a few times, hopefully. Um, so. Uh, you know, if your tires start getting bald and wearing out, you're going to be affecting the performance of your car. Just like when your frets get worn out, you're going to be affecting the performance of your guitar. 
So uh, I try to not glue in frets, especially when it's going to somebody that's a professional player because they are going to wear out those frets again. So let's go ahead and get started on pressing these bad boys in. Yeah, I like that. All right. It's gonna press in nice. So I did end up doing just a slight uh, little crimp uh, with these crimping tools, nothing crazy. Uh, the amount of pressure they use on those tools will control how much you crimp. Uh, here, maybe even come in and get a close up and we'll show you just on this. So you can do a little bit. Or the extreme would be that. But I'm happy with this. It's not, you know, the, the fret isn't pushing in with my thumbs. It's going to require a little bit of effort. Um, there's many different ways to install frets. You got your brass fret hammer. Uh, I really like the uh, Stumac Jaws 2 uh, fret press system. Uh, this has got the 16 inch brass call that's going to match our fretboard radius. And then this bottom piece here just fits right underneath the neck and it's padded so you don't do any damage to the finish of the neck. You just bring this bad boy in. Center it, and then just use slight pressure and just press that bad boy down in there. That looks great. You want to come back and check. Don't lift hard, but just come over here and just kind of press up on your fret ends. And you know, you don't want to go through and do 10 frets and then realize that they're not pressed in very well. If they start lifting up, that's going to cause you all types of problems. When you go to do the fret level and crown, this is in there great. So I'm just going to go through and just bang out all seven of these. seven frets pressed in and now it's time to go through and just check make sure we did a good job pressing them in if you got any high spots you're definitely going to hear them uh, and we're going to go through and level these out still but before doing that you want to make sure that you're just done seating the frets if you need to pull one out and redo it right now would be the time to do it uh, so things you want to check for is loose fret ends uh, for that uh, there's a couple different tools you can use this is another Stuart McDonald tool this is called a fret rocker span it across three frets if the one in the middle is high it's called a fret rocker, it will start rocking. So you just want to bring this through, and you're going to get a little bit of, a little bit here and there. What, I, what we're looking for right now is like a big rock. Like if the fret's not pressed all the way down into the slot, you're going to really hear it. You're going to get a big rock going. Uh, these aren't bad. I, that's probably the most I'm hearing right there is kind of where the B and the high E string would be on the second fret. Uh, so you can also take a razor blade and kind of tuck it under there and see if in fact, you're just not seated, and if that tip of the razor blade can go under the bead of the fret, then you know you've got a little bit of a problem there. This one could go down a little bit more. Um, so what you want to do is just make sure that it's not loose. Like if you put pressure on it, you can press it down into the fret slot, and then it comes back up. Uh, you need to freeze that down with some glue or pull it out, crimp the tang a little more, press it back in. Or maybe you can just hammer it down like the press didn't get it all the way in. This one looks like it's just getting held up a little bit. Uh, so what I have here is called a fret setter. Uh, you can put this, it's got a little groove in it. You can put this right over the edge of the fret. Then you grab your fret hammer. Uh, don't do this in front of the customer. They freak out. Uh, and then come back and check and see. Fixed it! <laughs> Oh. 
Okay, so I've gone through and checked that uh, all my frets are seated. Now what you want to do is just ever so slightly bend the ends of the fret down just a little bit uh, to just kind of wrap them around the edge of your fretboard. Uh, you don't have to go crazy on this. Uh, it's just a little tap. Just be careful with your hammer as you're hammering a, on a guitar. Uh, but just, just that. That's all we're doing there. Just that little bend over the side. Voila. Uh, okay, and then when we're done with that, uh, we're just going to go ahead and cut off the tanks. Again, make sure you don't get these down on your bench because you will scratch up the guitar. I just hold my hand underneath, bring this in, cut it, drop it, and then uh, throw it in the trash. All right, so we got our frets all pressed in, we got the overhang cut back and then knocked down. Uh, so now what we need to do is just take care of the uh, super sharp edges and then we got a bevel. Uh, to do that, I'll just use a file and then I also have this uh, beveling file which runs over the fretboard, like so. to do this for a while and then when I come back what you want to do is get that bevel in and then bring it right up to the fretboard edge don't go too far if you go too far you over bevel that edges what you do is you're pushing your outside ease too close to that bevel and if you've ever played a guitar where the strings are too close to the bevel you go to do a vibrato on the low E and a conk you fall off the fret or the same you start doing uh, some trills or pull offs on the high E and you find yourself pulling off the edge of the bevel there so just be careful don't overdo this So after I've gone and I put the bevel on with the uh, bevel block file, I've just got a small file. I'm just going to come back and just kiss these edges. Just make sure that it's nice and smooth along this edge of the fret. Uh, and then we're going to come through with a round over file and we're just going to hit the edges of that bevel and just, just take that sharp edge off of it. Uh, we've all picked up a guitar and felt fret sharp at uh, fret ends and uh, God, that's just the worst. It's super annoying. So we just want to make sure we get these all nice and smooth and then we can move on to the fret dress. So here's the just small little fret end file and I'll just bring it on over here and just just, just going to kiss this edge. Just make sure it feels nice and soft. So we got our frets all installed and they're beveled and uh, those edges are all softened up. Now what we need to do is do just a full fret level and dress uh, to this guitar. 
So uh, this is just a homemade neck jig I've got. Built this thing probably, I don't know, 20 years ago. Uh, Stu Mac sells one, it's expensive. Sorry Stu Mac, I love your stuff. Uh, I use just some t-shirts on here to just kind of protect the guitar. Uh, put that down and just a ratchet strap here. Go ahead and lock this in. Not too tight, you do not want to crunch the guitar. We're gonna put a couple of cam clamps on here to help pull it down. If you've ever used a ratchet strap, uh, you know as soon as you're done, you gotta go, oh yeah, that's not going anywhere. It's just a rule. Uh, so go ahead and grab these cam clamps here. Uh, these got cork on them, so they're not gonna dent up the finish at all. Just come down and put one right here where the end block is. Just snug it up, don't go crazy. This one over here, just got it away. Again, just snugging it up. We just want to make it to where it's just not moving at all. And these will come under here and support the neck. We're not going to lock that in just yet, though. Just want to make sure we're centered here. If you're doing any adjusting to this, this is the time to do it. Okay, so now that we've got it all locked in, uh, before we put the neck supports up underneath, we want to just get the truss rod adjusted to where we can get this neck just completely straight. Uh, got a notch straight edge here. This will just come down, pop on here, and then I'll come down, take a knee, and just look for light. We're looking real good here. I might want to just take a little bit of pressure off that truss rod. By running my fingers back behind here, I will just cast a little shadow off this. I'm seeing just a little bit of light on the first and second fret. Everything's looking real good on the tongue extension. So I'm just going to back the truss rod off just a hair. Check it again. There we go. That's looking real good. No light anywhere. So now we're ready to go ahead and we're going to tape up the fretboard with just blue painter's tape. Uh, got some sitting around over here. Whenever I'm putting tape anywhere on a guitar, I always stick it to my shirt first. Just take a little bit of the tack off. Um, just a couple of horror stories of putting tape on finish and then pulling the tape and the finish. Uh, also, uh, when you're doing this, be careful like when you pull it off, uh, especially on vintage guitars. Don't just go throwing that tape away because sometimes you pull an inlay off and you'll have a dot in there and you throw the tape away. You go dig through the trash try to find an inlay. Uh, and I'll just come through and just Right for that fret edge. All right, tape gets a little bit long. You just gotta go and just go over to a bench, put a piece of tape down, cut with a razor blade, cut it in half. Alrighty, so got uh, the painter's tape down the whole fretboard here. Uh, next up, I'm just going to hit each fret with a blue Sharpie. The uh, reason we're doing this is I'm going to come back with a leveling bar, and as I sand the frets, just having blue marker over the frets lets you see really clearly where you're hitting and where you're not. And the whole idea of the fret level is we want to sand these frets until all this blue is gone. Um, so we're going to go and just level them all out, and that makes sure we don't have any high-low spots anywhere on this fretboard. Okay, so now I need to set these three posts. The whole idea of this is just to put support on it. If you go through and push this one up, see that movement? That's bad. That's going to take away our straightness that I've got going with the truss rod. So all I want to do is just bring this under, and then as it gets close, I just want to tap right here, and that'll let me know right when I first hit it. There we go. Now I'm not putting any pressure. Then I'll set this post, and if I go too high on this one, it's going to push this up off of here. So all you want to do is just get this under and support the neck without putting any pressure up on it. Come back and tap. We are good to go. This is just a leveling bar. I've got uh, 3M uh, adhesive sandpaper on there. It's 320 grit. And we got our neck completely straight, supports under, the blue on them. So what we want to do is just set this on here and we're going to just carefully go back and forth. Watch out. You don't want to bang into the nuts and that flying. Um, and just carefully you don't go off the sides and dent the guitar. A lot of people put a lot of protective stuff around the guitar. I've done a million of these. I know I'm not going to damage anything. Knock on wood. 
Just kidding, Paul. All right, so just gonna go back and forth, just real evenly. I'm not putting any downward pressure down, just back and forth. I'm just sanding away. All right, so I've gone through and leveled all this out so there's no blue left on any of the frets. Uh, side effect of that is all the frets now are flat, so what we need to do is go back and crown the frets. So I'm gonna go back over to my other bench and I'll use a crowning file and I'll take a fret that's flat on the top and just put a nice crown right up on the top of it. Okay, so to do the crowning, I've got a uh, Stumac crowning file somewhere. It's actually how I spend most of my day, is looking for tools. Aha, there it is. All right, so uh, this one here is the 300 grit, uh, and it's just the diamond uh, fret file. Before using that, I'm gonna take the magic marker here, the, the blue Sharpie, and go back and uh, hit all these frets here. And what I wanna do with that crowning file is when I come back is I wanna leave just a very small, thin blue line down the top of the fret. Uh, that way I know I haven't disturbed the level. If I were to go over the top of the fret on each of these, then I'm going to be having high and low spots depending on how long I uh, sand it on each fret. If I only hit the sides of the fret and bring it up to the point and leave the blue line, then we know I didn't disrupt the level that we just spent the time doing with the leveling bar. So I'll just bring this in here. It's got two different sides on it for jumbo or just medium fret wire. I use the medium fret wire. And then, like I said, we're just gonna not disrupt the top. Here. Just keep an eye on what you're doing. Careful you don't come off, especially down here and hit the guitar. So I'm uh, all done with doing the fret crown and fret level. Uh, so what we need to do now is just sand and polish these frets up and then we'll be done with our fret dress. Uh, the fret file that I use there and the sandpaper on the uh, leveling bar is 320. Uh, so I'll start with 320 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna come and just sand every spot of these frets all the way down. Don't spend a bunch of time on the top of the fret. Again, we don't wanna disrupt the level. Um, but we're gonna take uh, 300 all the way to 1500 grit sandpaper and then we'll buff them. So just get in there and sand them. Uh, fold that paper over and just get in there and just sand it up. So I like to do this side of the fret all the way down and I'll come back and do this side of the fret all the way back. That way I just don't accidentally miss something. Easily my least favorite part of guitar work would be sanding frets. But it's important. Gotta make it buttery smooth. This is really what you're paying for when it comes to fret work. All right, so went ahead and sanded these frets all the way up to 1500 grit, and now it's time to buff them. Uh, I have a large buffing wheel that I'm gonna take this over to and use, but if you don't have access to one of those, all you need is a Dremel. You can buy small little buffing wheels and then get yourself one of these little shields and you can come through and just do it that way, uh, but I'm gonna take a step over to the big buffing wheel. So after buffing them, uh, we just gotta clean up the frets, get any of that compound off, then we'll pull the tape, and then uh, I'll put a little bit of lemon oil on the fretboard, just clean that up. 
But right now, before pulling the tape, you just want to go through and just really give this just a good rub. You'll see all the kind of compound I'm coming off. If you don't do this now, you get the guitar back to the customer or if it's your guitar and your hands will look like this after you play for a few minutes. So just clean these up now. All right, now I'm just going to go and use a little bit of lemon oil and just condition the fretboard here and clean it all up. And then we're going to be moving on to just setting this bad boy up. Excellent. Well, that's, uh, that's about it for the work on this guy. It's ready to go back out for another 100,000 miles. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. And uh, um, if you guys out there have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them for you. And if anybody uh, needs any fret work or any repair work, or you want to come by and just check out the shop, maybe get one of my custom Macmillan acoustic guitars, I'm always happy to hear from you and answer any questions you may have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.